Django is a very popular Python-based web framework. It's been used by a lot of companies. A lot of developers love it, especially because you can get up and running really quick. Django is also an ORM, which means it connects to the back end as a database, connects to the database. And uh, it simplifies the way a developer can connect to a database and instead of writing their own SQL, they can just use objects, which is very familiar. Yeah? In this video, I want to actually explain that back-end portion of Django because this is the back-end channel at the end of the day. Uh, and I like to talk about the architecture of Django when it comes to connection management to the database. At the end, I'm going to talk about the advantages and also the disadvantages of this architecture. Let's jump into it. So if we if we took this, for example, we have a back-end database right here. We have our Django framework, which is spun up, and we have three worker threads of execution available for us here and you can control that of course right you have many clients that try to connect to the web uh, framework here since http request get post stuff like that. those requests will turn around and connect to the database to execute certain queries get the results and then build the response for the server classic uh, three-tier architecture so now we get into the nitty-gritty details here first of all the client will need to connect to django as a as a tcp connection it needs to establish a connection i am not talking about the front end here in details because i want to leave it to another video but there must be a listener here that listens for connections, whether this listener is a single threaded or a multiple thread listening on the same port using the socket option reuse port and the kernel would load balance the, the connection to multiple threads. It's, it's out of the, you know, uh, this is out of the scope of the discussion. But let's say we have one connection that is owned by this thread and this client is sending an HTTP request to that threat to that server yeah? so what the http request here is like is a get request it goes to that uh, thread the thread picks it up it parses it understand that's a get request and then it turns around and then oh we're trying to fetch certain api right and i need to make a database query so what django does here is upon receiving that request and upon needing to connect to the database and ex executing a query django will establish a connection to the database right there and then only it doesn't establish it on startup right? by default right so in this particular case the tcp connection will be handled to the database right so there is a three-way handshake if tls is uh, is configured also we're going to do a tls so the cost of established connection establishment is incurred on the request itself right, by default so after that of course we're going to send the query and what will happen here django will send the query uh, the database will process the query whatever the sql query is it's going to take x amount of time and then meanwhile the client is waiting here right and technically not only the client is waiting right Let's be very careful here when we speak. Not only the client is waiting, the thread is also waiting. The thread is doing nothing here. So you can actually serve stuff here with this thread because it's doing nothing, it's sending an IO, right? It's not like just doing computational stuff, right? So when the database responds back, it gets the response and then Django will write the response to the client socket, right? So it will build effectively, it will, whatever you wrote the code here, it will write down the response as an HTTP response to the client. Very simple stuff, right? And once that response is written, what Django does is it closes the backend connection. It was designed to do this, which is very good uh, initially looking at this, right? Because uh, the goal here was we need to minimize the number of connections to the database because a lot of database connections to the database will increase the load of the database right the usage here that might be true maybe 10 years ago i don't think that is as effective here because people are now moving to something called persistent connections right the http model if you think about it right http 1.0 was exactly like what django is described Every request you send in HTTP was designed, if you send a request to an HTTP server, you establish a TCP connection, you send the request, 
uh, you get a response, you close, you must close the connection. That's how HTTP 1.0 was designed, right? But then quickly we we throw that away because uh, because that was so expensive, right? Because every time we send a request, we establish a TCP connection and we're doing the, uh, the TCP and followed by TS, right? So that was very expensive to do. So we opted for keep alive in HTTP 1.1 and then HTTP 2, the connection is always alive and we're sending tons of streamed multiplex requests and the same connection. So persistent connection is the way to go. That's the model today. Again, because we it depends all on what we're trying to do here. And for this scenario, especially if you're chatty with the backend with the database, persistent connection is the way to go. Of course, uh, if you can opt in for this approach, if you know that the number of connections to the database are very, very low, but sometimes it's not the case. That's why you really need to study your use case and your requirements here and think about your architecture when you configure these things. So this is how persistent connections are done in Django. You can do this today. You can configure something called connection max age equal none. And when you set it to none, it will become persistent. And the first client that connects will establish the connection and it will remain alive for effectively forever until it fails, right? So if the connection fails for like, I don't know, uh, something happened to the network, you know, socket here, you lost connection, the Django will close it and the next request will basically open it. And you can see that you can send many requests and these threads will take these requests and serve these connections effectively. And this is pretty good. Persistent connection. We use them all the time, right? But here is one kind of limitation when it comes to Django. Django, according to the documentation, I didn't make this up. Right? I'm going to reference this documentation below in the uh, comment section, right? Django is one connection, one thread model. So if your thread, if you have one thread, you get one connection only. And that's it. I didn't read anything else in the entire documentation. So that must be true. And so what does that mean? It means that if you have three clients here, three TCP connections are spread around the threads. Again, this is not necessarily true. It depends how did you, how your front end listening model is. And this is its own video by itself, right? But assume it is. Assume is every thread is it. Is, is accepting a connection for every client, right? So in this case, these this is this client sends a request to this, and the thread takes the request, uh, opens the obviously the backend TCP connection to the database, sends the query, and then the query is just spinning in the database because queries are not cheap, right? Sometimes uh, you have query that is expensive, one, two, three seconds. Yeah? Then you have another one at the same time, concurrently, same thing, another one. So now you have the three threads has sent three queries to the database and all of these queries are just being executed in the database. The clients are waiting for a response. The threads are also, as we explained earlier, are also waiting, which is not good. You never want your threads to be idle in this particular case. Yeah, the threads can still do things you know, because this is an asynchronous call, right? The thread is free to do other stuff, but what exactly, right? Let's say if you, if this, if this client sends a request, right, connects to the thread, it will accept it because, hey, it's not doing anything. So this thread will accept this client if that request, let's say this request, that, that this pink request, right, is, um, want to connect to the database, so what the thread will does is like, we'll take this request and say, wait a minute, you wanted to connect to the database? Mm, I'm sorry, but this connection that I have is already busy. I cannot send multiple requests on the same connection. This is a discussion by itself. You might say, no, why? Why not? Well, you can try. The, not all database supports this pipelining concept where you can just pump in multiple SQL statements one after the other on the same connection without waiting for a response it's very dangerous to do that because if you send a sql statement right here right if you send a sql query and then the database start process and you in the same connection you sent another sql right 
and let's say the second query was faster you the database immediately responded with that with, with the second response right so the database responded with the second sql response how does the thread know that oh is now is this what you're is this what you're sending me is this for the first query or the second query it doesn't know there is no identifier when it comes to sql statements right when you send back result it all depends on the protocol of the databases most databases don't have this concept if django built something like that and the database supports it postgres just i think in postgres 13 supported pipeline where you can send multiple requests in the same database but most of the time you can't do this you just say hey you know what just be safe establish another tcp connection but the problem with django is it's a one connection pair thread model so that connection is now busy you cannot use it for something else right so in this particular case this client is waiting it's not doing anything so let's say let's say this other client now let's not say he's waiting let's say um, i'm sending a request right but this request has nothing to do with the database it's just uh, i don't know uh, it's reading from the cache a file from the cache and responding to it it's an html file the thread will happily process that for you why because the thread is technically not busy it's just waiting for stuff right as long as the communication is asynchronous and i wrote a medium article about this right asynchronous communication the thread is, busy, is is not doing anything it's just hey send a request i'm just, I'm just sitting here not doing anything right so it can do cpu intensive operation you can send it to do compute hash that's fine the thread can do this work but if you are io bound where these guys actually want to talk to the database you're stuck these guys are will be blocked so what can you do well you can you can simply just th spin up multiple threads for django right and yeah because if you spin in another thread each thread will get another connection that's fine right so you have more threads to serve uh clients the problem with this is the uh, <coughs> you now established you can you can go up to a num a certain number of thread after that you will see severe degradation in performance well, let me explain right the number of threads are usually right what nginx and ha proxy and envoy recommends because technically if you look at django's acting like a proxy right talking to the database right so the num the recommended thing is every one thread per core per hardware thread to be specific but one thread per core right so if you spin up four threads you have four cores right all right or four or eight hardware threads to be like if you have multi-threaded uh, uh, if you have hyper threading on your cpu enabled then you can have every thread sits on a core why do you want every thread to be pinned to a core because context switching right if your thread lives in that cpu and just sits there and and and, and all the processing happening there uh, in that thread then the cpu will not move it out of the cpu you know to put other stuff uh, in it uh, in the cpu right if you have 100 threads then what the cpu will do is like okay uh, i can only have one thread simultaneously right it's running on my on my cpu right so I, I will execute this and then okay one other thread comes in and start to do stuff it will put in the thread and will move the other thread right to execute stuff so you, the cpu will be shuffling the four cores in this particular case will be shuffling 100 threads left and right we're removing removing uh, context switch context switch and that the cost of context switching will actually kill your performance eventually right that's why they they tell you don't don't spin up 50 or 100 threads right it's not going to become faster you're bounded by the number of cpu cores at the end of the day yeah if you have 48 cores go nuts right but if you have like 16 or 8 or 4 then you can only go by that right and that's assuming you have django's only running on this machines that's the only thing that is running on this server right that's why i i absolutely love system architecture and backend architecture all right guys uh, that's it for me today uh, if you enjoy this co uh, content um, 
hit that like button and check out my Udemy course, database.hussainnasser.com, fundamentals of database engineering. I talk about this stuff, uh, you know, I absolutely love this stuff. And uh, check out my networking course if you're interested in networking, network.hussainnasser.com. Thank you so much. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.